Are we good? Are we good? Well, that says we're going live. Let me let me check here. So hello, everybody. Yes, we're going live. Great. So welcome back, everybody. Of course, this is Coach to Coach with Laura Van LaRusso and Dr. Keith McNally. It's Tuesday afternoon, and mm -hmm. we're going to talk about purpose and passion. I want to start our conversation, Laura, with the article that I wrote. So every Tuesday, I, I publish uh, the Question Guide newsletter. And so I'm in a series of articles that pull directly from my book, Walking the Path, mm -hmm. A Leader's mm -hmm. Journey. And I'm specifically looking at one of the characters. Her name is Penny. And Penny was born with a physical deformity. Her left hand is her fingers are fused together and as such um mm -hmm. she's different and her the community which is a very closed community uh of, you know a community sits in a valley wrapped around a mountain range and they have ostracized her and they have isolated her and now at 18 at the age of 18 uh she's beginning to really feel the impact of mm -hmm. of that of that uh, you know isolation on her life she only really has you know one mom figure and two close friends one being her cousin slash sister and now she's beginning to feel the need to do something different with her life and so she's wanting to find a people at the very least a place where she could live and be her own self, that she can find her own purpose, that she can find a passion for life, because where she is now, she doesn't have that. And so right. she was the second character to identify, well, maybe there is life on the other side of the mountains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to talk about purpose and passion. So let's go ahead and define those two things. And I know you want to start with, with passion. So what are you excited about? Well, passion is everything, right? Passion is the thing that gets us up in the morning. <clears throat> as we say, to, as I say to my son, and I've said to many of my students when I was a traditional teacher in the classroom, try to find work that you're passionate about, and then you will not feel like you're working because it'll be something that you'll just feel so enthusiastic for. And it makes so, sense. Right? I, I think that that's why we became coaches, right? We are very passionate about empowering folks and helping folks to see themselves as better and able to achieve. Mm -hmm. So I would say passion is an emotional response. And it's also very personal because my passion may not be the same passion as someone else's, right? What I'm enthusiastic about is creating language accessibility and fluency and confidence and all those great things and someone else may say mm, that's great yeah i do believe in that but uh, i'm more of a tech person i i think technology needs to be more accessible or or maybe uh communities need to be expanded and more inclusive so uh, you know when you wake up in the morning today's another exciting day because <laughs> you're going to impact somebody and help somehow, them Keith. somehow <laughs> and communicate help them communicate better so that's what gets you up and excited to get breakfast done and get get on the computer and get to work yes. but your purpose then is on a kind of larger scale so how do you Definitely. see your purpose your purpose is more about your strategic plan right your purpose is the thing that comes your passion is your emotion that comes from you mm -hmm. and your purpose is your why why you have the passion in the first place and then how you're going to use that why to create a plan okay well then lord and that begs the question what is your why uh -huh. why, why, why does you know <laughs> because you're a communications coach and i, and I very often call mm -hmm. you a confidence coach as well yes but the question Except, is why? Okay, why this is, is why. Much like your character of Penny, uh, language can be a barrier and can exclude people from communities. Hmm. They can they can feel like they don't belong or they cannot relate or they're not connected to their communities. Now, 
my new community is the professional environment, right? I'm really looking to target nonprofit organizations and, and uh, professionals who speak English as a second language and also native speakers. Mm -hmm. All that aside, when you don't have access or confidence or strategies to present clearly in English and to articulate your message effectively, so that people see the, the value in it, you can become excluded from that very community of work. And so that is what my purpose is all about. My purpose is you're gonna go into your job and you're gonna hold your head up and you're going to raise your hand at that uh, staff meeting or you're going to, your, your supervisor is gonna say, we need a presentation, a professional development series and I want you to head it, develop it, and present it. And you, as the person who's asked to do this, has no problem. You hold your head up and you do it. And you do such a good job that you impress others. That's why, okay? Those are the kinds of people that I want to help facilitate. So I, I know, deep down, I know that language can easily be a barrier um and cause somebody to feel isolated even uh self-conscious uh because mm -hmm. because of of how they're interacting with the people around them and their community but i it's never uh, for me it's never at the forefront of my thinking um how did this become why did this how did this become your why how did this become your why your purpose now i'm curious it was a com thank you it was a combination of things Number one, it was the idea of becoming an advocate and working as an advocate for 12 years. Okay. Uh, I worked as a New York State advocate, and my role in that capacity was to educate people about the laws and their responsibilities around those laws. Um, and part of that was creating translation and making sure that organizations and even public uh, entities like hospitals, police stations, places like that provided translation where necessary. Mm -hmm. And where it became, where this uh, issue sort of rose its sort of ugly head at the time, because we've gotten much better about it, was when I had to escort a young mother and her daughter to the police station, because unfortunately uh, the mother was a victim of a very bad crime. And we'll just say it that way. Sure. And, uh, and so, uh, there was nobody to interpret for this mother. And nobody so her at father, all? not at that particular time. Now, this was a very long time ago. Okay. You know, this was like somewhere back in the in the early uh, 90s. Okay. But there was no one there to translate. And so this young girl was put in a position of having to translate for her mother when her mother had to file this report with the police. That was one example and i said oh that's a problem mm. the other problem is because i'm an advocate uh working for this independent living movement for people with disabilities at the time the, 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 we wanted to move away from the institutional model right we didn't want the community to be the institutional community like oh don't worry you'll just move into a supported apartment which is great but not everybody wanted to do that or you can move into a group home that's great too but not everybody some people just want to live their regular lives like everyone else mm -hmm. but that means you have to be responsible that means you have to take responsibility for your actions and so for example we had other another client who came and uh, he lied to me you know he lied he just said that he paid the rent and he and it was the landlord was out to get him and i'm his advocate and i should get on the phone and i should help him so i said okay i, I mean i'm pretty smart about this so i just said let's get on the phone together we'll have this three-way phone call well by the end of the conversation the landlord explained the reality of the situation and he explained that this particular person was so busy yelling and screaming and not being productive in his communication. Mm. So there again, communication skills became really important. You know, you can be very angry, but you still don't have the right to you know, curse people out, to yell at them, to speak with, speak to them inappropriately. 
So because of those issues, learning how to use language effectively, even as a native speaker, and then having access to translation, and in fact, learning English so that you are not dependent on someone else, even more importantly, are the main reasons why I pursued this, uh, well, this passion I, yeah. of mine and this work of mine, this purpose. I love it. And that that's, I love, those are two great stories. And so now as a coach, um, mm -hmm. what do you see, is your purpose still the same? Or is it really now focused on helping people better their positions at work? Or is it still this large scale advocacy of, of helping mm -hmm. people just fit in um, since we're talking about fitting in. Mm -hmm. There's always this idea of fitting in, <clears throat> uh, whether it's uh, you're looking through an advocacy lens or you're looking through um, strategic planning as part of an organization. So I would say I will always be an advocate. I can't get it out of me as much as I try. You know, it's just it's just part of me. Good. Um, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Um, but as a coach now in this new in this new life that I've chosen, I uh, I would like to be seen as a resource uh, for organizations to come to to work at every level, whether it's in the human resources department to help them articulate what they mean by diversity, equity, and inclusion when it comes to their hiring practices down to staff who maybe has to go out and do presentations for the community or their clients and has cultural differences. Like people, they may perceive them as rude and they don't know how to respond or maybe they don't have the words or the language that they want to use to effectively impart their message. So I'd like to work with the uh, frontline people and also help the top head uh, departments in organizations so that they can, and I'll finally end it here, so that they can articulate DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion in a way that is accessible and understandable and really explains the purpose. It's not just a box to check off, like, let's just do this so they know we're doing this and so then we'll get some funding. No, no, no that there's a reason and a purpose to hire diverse professionals because it'll improve your uh, outcomes and better represent your mission. So this morning, when I, when I published the article, it was entitled Advocate for Yourself, which is a challenge for people mm -hmm. with uh, differences, I would, I would right. imagine. So yes. can you speak to that briefly? And then I wanted to hit on one more topic and let's kind of close mm -hmm. up this conversation. What are some of the challenges mm -hmm. for self-advocacy, if there are any? Oh, well, there's two different challenges personally. Um, one of them is imposter syndrome. Okay, we oh. all suffer. <laughs> we, hear, we hear that a lot and I don't necessarily believe in that, uh -huh. but talk to me about that. Okay. So, so it, well, I understand how you feel because we're pretty bold people, you and I, and we, we like challenges. You know, we're, I get the feeling that we're much the same in that way. Give us a challenge. Oh, ha, ha, I'll do it. Let me try to do that. I'll give it a shot. But many people who speak uh, English as a second language or who don't have confidence as presenters, they may feel that their message is not authentic that they are just doing what is expected of them, that they are not really expressing the true passion and purpose of what they're talking about, right? So, so that's where the imposter syndrome can come in. The other aspect is when you are a person who speaks uh, English as a second language, even at the advanced level, uh, you can at times, at least my clients have shared with me, let me put it that way. Um, my clients have shared with me that they feel judged because of their accents, mm. because of their uh, lack of cultural awareness. They're uncomfortable with small talk. They don't feel welcomed. They don't feel included. 
necessarily. Um, so do they have so to take, so imposter syndrome then seems to require you to step up as a self-advocate. There has yes. to be that some type of empowerment. Yes, you, you, um, you really hit the nail on the head, as they say, you pointed the, the, the very, very, very important uh, aspect here. What is it? We have to get rid of that negative voice in our mm -hmm. heads. Okay, I'm not saying that we we should leave communities that are not supportive of us. We don't need to be around communities that are not for us, uh, you know, that are not including us. Uh, we can we can choose people that are for us and that are for our growth. But uh, the main idea is we have to remember that we are our own best advocates, and no matter what people's perceptions of your differences are, my differences are, anyone else's, you hold your head up and you remember you, what you have to offer. Not in an arrogant, you can be quiet about it. You can be really humble. There are some very humble, quiet people who know a hell of a lot. You know, um, it's funny to say as a communication coach, but my father used to always tell us growing up, God gave you two ears and one mouth, and you should use them in proportion to one another. And what do I mean? Listening and observing and not reacting is also a very effective form of communication and a communication strategy. Huh. And that is what can help you survive a community that is not welcoming to you, number one, or it can give you the gumption to say, oh, I don't need, the, you know, this crowd, it's not a good fit for me. I need to go where I'm a better fit. Cool. I like that. Um, so with the limited time we have left, uh, I know we talked about this um, off, off, offline, mm -hmm. but we're going to start welcoming other professionals to have, be a part of this yeah. conversation. Exciting. So, so it is exciting. So if you're it out is. there and you want to be a part of coach to coach, not in terms of co-hosting, but be demonstrating who, you know, what you do and who you are and all that kind of cool stuff, we would love yeah. to have you join us. And so uh, just send a direct message to me or to Miss Laura and mm -hmm. you'll put, we'll put you on the show. Thank you so much. Laura, yeah. thank you so much for this, another weekly edition of coach to coach. And this is Laura Bandaverso. And of course, my name is Dr. Keith McNally. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye. Take care.